My name is Saddam Hussein Malik and uh, I'm from Afghanistan. Um, back to the years um, I was working with uh, when I graduated from my high school. I have worked with ANA, we call uh, ANA, Afghan International Army. And um, uh, that was on 2nd of April 2012. And um, I had um, training, we graduated from the Academy 172A-1UD-0211. That's my registered ID number in uh, an Afghan in National Army. And um, we had um, training and after graduating from training, we moved to um, the province, which is um, uh, called and named Helmand. And there is a mother base we call Mevan uh, 215. And um, that time we had um, a gather information or you, you can say United Information uh, um, Operations with uh, NATO. Um, from different countries, including uh, Denmark, Estonia, and the British and um, the US, um, related with um, all of them related with the NATO. And uh, I was um, helping with them. We had uh, in gathering from uh, operations like uh, moving from one place to the others. And then, due to some problems and issue that I had with, um, with the other parties uh, in Afghanistan, um, Taliban and uh, Daesh, they warned the us and um, um, I was in kind of danger, so um, not kind of danger to be honest, 100% in danger. So um, I tried to leave Afghanistan and move uh, to the safest country where I can start my life again. I tried to be uh, um, settle myself and um, ask for help around in the UAE, in the United Arab Emirates, but unfortunately I I haven't got any support from the government, nor from the UNHCR office. And then uh, I moved to Belarus. I, I have lost, uh, I have lost my family. And um, in in 2014, when I when I left the country, um, in, in the same time, I've uh, I've lost my brother Jamal Nasser. Um, it was being shot and it's being grabbed from from the school. And uh, they didn't shot him in front of the school, but they said. Um, Hey, kid, can you please read this letter? Uh, they came by a car to the school and said, uh, Hey, kid, can you please read this letter? And then when he just looked into him, to the letter, what is it? And they grab him to the car and they take him away and they shot him and they drop him back in uh, in the main road in front of our house. And then they we understand that time I was in Dubai and uh, I wasn't able to do anything. Uh, it's, it's, it's really hard, my brother. And... Um, in 2015, December, uh, 2015, and 15th of December, um, my mother was uh, blast in the roadside bomb while she was going with uh, my brother's wife uh, to the hospital, and she was able to make it. And, and uh, I just uh, see her face which she, while she was lying on her deathbed, and uh, I, I can't do anything. And uh, Recently, when, why I was really wanted to to leave the country that I really wanted to, you know, to support my family and um, just to take them out. So we really don't want. You cannot really do anything with the government, and you cannot really support yourself. You just want to be relaxed, and uh, you want to, you know. I'm sorry. And uh, when I uh, understand that there is no support in Dubai, that I will be able to support myself, and uh, and I, I would be able to stay longer. And they rejected me from everywhere. I do remember I was it was really terrified moment for me. So I tried. I, I went to the court. I went everywhere. So it was just. Okay, I'm safe, but my family is still in danger, so I know that I will be keep losing my family members, those members which I'll not be able to, to get it back. So I had um, a visit visa to Belarus, and uh, uh, I was treated really badly uh, because I lost my passport, and uh, in that moment they put me in jail, like a real prison. I can um, I can say that it wasn't a prison uh, for people. Uh, even animals cannot be treated the way they treated us in, uh, in that small cell. 
and nobody cares, nobody um, disturbing their self, what you are going through, what's your pain and sorrow, and what you calling for, what you're saying. They said, uh, you're illegal to Belarus and you don't have any documents. I said, no, I'm not illegal. Please check my documents. I've come by Minsk airport 16 of January. You can check my record and you can check all of my detail. I even give them the time. It was 5.20 in the morning that I arrived at Minsk airport. You can check me. And um, and then oh, um, you have all of the information. I'm not illegal. They said, okay, as long as you, you, we don't know where, who you are and from where did you come, we'll not be allowed to let you go out from the jail. They didn't let me go out to just to to breathe the fresh air or to have some fresh air or to have work. No, I had work after 140 days, and the bad time was um, was uh, it's unimaginable. Like in the entire life, I didn't cry. I didn't uh, be so hopeless the way I was hopeless. I I tried to suicide three times. They didn't even try to do something, so I was. I was in the same jail cell for uh, various of times, like less than three days, exactly six months. And in that six months, I, I faced with lots of people with different kind of criminals. That's what I face. Really, I wanted to go out from Belarus. When I come to Latvia, said Lithuania, said, yeah very official very nicely well treated and i understand that yeah i'm safe now i feel it i still record that moment uh, it was on my phone where i'm uh, or i can see the european flag and they said uh, it's a lot when about and even my friend and mr artist fabric and uh waldis Werners who have no um, benefits for me but they really saved my life and uh, they did something which is uh, remarkable really remarkable i wish uh, that everybody would know that they have a minister who cares uh as of the moment um, i just want to to be reunited with my family and uh, to be in safety